Section 7 The Battle for the Birds, Part 3. Chapter 1. A Second Beaver Moon. The magpies laughed in chorus as if they understood another sudden wave of magnetism that hit the side of the building. The crow spies looked in at a distraught Terry. They called in twos to alert the occupant who lay in the bath as 0.8 micro Tesla swept up the side. The safety of his head's position on the tin ledge was highly suspect. The danger indicator on the meter did not tell the whole story and any hopes that Terry had felt were dashed. The readings were huge and way above the curdling level. They were held at this precipice, unmoving. Now it showed double the figure which the meter indicated as safe and 80 times the level which caused biological effects. As a result, Terry was soon back in his safe space, hoping that these were his neighbor's last desperate attempts or just the overspill of a communication network that he, as yet, could not find. Again, he took the reel of grounding tape from above the fuse box and connected the studio window glass to the window frame with thin lines and a succession of squares that were almost invisible from the channel road below. These conduction lines and patches were then run down to the radiator beneath which drastically pulled the voltage strength down. As he similarly attached tape to the toilet. Room's window, Terry's mind was drawn back to his earlier attempts to use the flantin on the same window. He remembered the small wires that he had confidently taped onto the panes of these channel side windows and how wrong he had been. They were comedic. Now his mind was afloat with fresh expectations. He knew that with an improved diet and lots of rest, these new dimensions of electromapping would deliver a kind healing to his body. Right now, he felt punctured, dried. As Terry shaked, the chemicals returned to mend. He knew that an equilibrium could be found. His swollen groin had become less painful and, even when the spots of blood on his back occasionally shot their pain, he knew that the cuts were drying and scarring away. The door rang and a length of aluminium cornicing was delivered. This was the longest yet and he felt its curing potential immediately. It was put on the lounge sofa. It was time for a coffee. The pan was brought to the boil and, simultaneously, the kitchen area was remetered, revealing the voltage lines that were attempting or succeeding in their upward trajectories. Any position high up on the mast side wall was a potential target. Perhaps the whole area was being swept by radar as it looked to grab on in spots. Other more direct lines were reaching out straight through the other block's roof and toward the base station at the foot of the hill. After a while, he heard the inevitable sounds of discomfort from his neighbor and now his hearing could place the position. It was under the floor beneath the washing machine. Terry pulled the appliance away from the wall toward the center of the room and, once he had started to deal with the newly revealed floor area, the power lines were discovered to be not only entering horizontally, but some were also flying across the wall at around the 45 degrees angle mark guided up toward the serving hatch side wall nearest the lounge where a multitude of sockets were located. Were they the target? Other lines were attempting to connect in with the vertical copper pipes in the corner under the boiler. Police sirens sounded in the distance, but this time they appeared less threatening and even appeared to be beckoning in a degree of safety. Terry spent a good half hour making readjustments to the flat and to his thinking. He had to get on top of the situation. Terry returned to the studio for the next timed music session. He instinctively looked to his left at the meter on the lower radiator pipe and, as soon as the values fell away, he went back to his playing. The session continued. He glanced over at the meter as it fluctuated around the 0.07 T mark and it occasionally seemed to fall away on cue, as if the power of his intention was driving the figures down. He turned away and focused on the harmony, tapping into a finder sequel feeling that reached out toward him and from some unexperienced future. The music unfolded under his careful supervision and he dwelt within his expectations. Once the placement of the metal sphinx on the toilet outflow was giving a better connection to the copper wire, the mess of sheets under the bath were realigned properly. Terry, now, had still more confidence and the defensive systems were built upon whilst Terry wrote more of his music in his mind. The two things were perfectly in sync. As soon as the ideas dried up he would instinctively know where the wall needed an addition or a readjustment. He attached small tape cuttings and each time it was almost like a religious duty. 
Terry had lit a suitable resin incense as an accompaniment. On Tuesday at 7 o'clock a.m. the full moon was sitting like cotton wool in a sky that looked stripped clean as if by a knife. Two jackdaws and a magpie were back to check for insects in the channel paving as the crows watched dubious people pack their cars to leave the block. Terry could be found adding strips of aluminium tape to the left front door post. He was learning where to focus his efforts. This was an entry point of such severity that even with this decoration the belligerent machines did not confuse. Terry checked the measurements just outside the front door but he could conclude very little. The swells were around the area coming somehow up from the wall and into his door side. Whilst climbing a chair at the studio window to take further measurements, Terry unexpectedly caught sight of Mrs. Horse returning with the eldest Nazi daughter but they did not scowl up at the window as expected as Terry stood, frozen. He had been putting the white polystyrene side of the radiator preserver to the inside corners of the window alcove and he was plainly visible to the pavement. However, it was immediately apparent that he was not important to the demented couple who scowled at the pavement as they went. Their minds were dullened by events and now they were not acting in the slightest way suspicious. Things seemed to be running in Terry's favor. The girder was propped up against the studio wall corner as a temporary shield and, that evening, his actions were rewarded with a good music writing session. On Saturday, however, the problem re-established itself again and Terry was forced back into macro-managing the gross situation. The pine dresser was moved back into its wall-side position with its back painted. Single crows flew past as an indication of things to come and a few finches shot past the window. It was 9 o'clock a.m. when his ears had had enough of the excessively high-pitched ethereal flutes that had been a constant annoyance from the first moments of the day. As the voltages changed, the induced tones flipped through harmonics, splitting into false octaves and sevenths. It was infuriating and the cause of this pressure felt just out of reach. Little wonder that he had blown out his hearing with a closed nose for years. It was too depressing to consider. He crouched down in the studio, frustrated. Using the knife, he spent ten minutes ramming strips of metal under the kitchen far walls skirting. He knew what had to be done. Terry spent the next few days going through the same routines, refining the additions and bafflers. He kept trying to confirm to himself that he was achieving something definable. There you are, he said as he crossed over the central point of the studio whilst pointing the meter to the floor. At this position, he put more aluminium sheeting down and then a girder was moved to the kitchen floor in the area behind the pulled-out washing machine. This would hopefully pull the sideways signals apart. The timer was re-established in the flat to work a DE filter in the lounge. Every circuit was engaged, except for the bell and smoke alarms. Some metal tape was snipped away from the bedroom ceiling and was run along the lower frame of the kitchen window, half of it stuck to the glass. This was very effective. Wallpaper was carefully positioned to the side of the toilet outflow to join the chicken wire, computer and various earthing attachments and tapes. The oven circuit was then also switched off. This caused the microwaves to fly into a rage. Terry positioned the long length of plasterboard connector along the lounge wall nearest to the immersion. He then crawled under the sheets of his bed and as a crow cleared the guttering and the winds began to rise once more, the full moon rose over the horizon.